gentlemen, what is good? Tonight's video is going to be called Be a Bouncer or a Bartender or vice versa. Be a bartender or be a bouncer at least once in your life if you are a man, okay? And I'm going to talk to you tonight about why that is. And I'm going to give you from my own personal experience why this works. I'm going to try to make this video short as I can. I always try to make them within like 10 to 15, 20 minutes, but I always end up like going off on tangents and shit like that. So, but tonight I'm just going to try to make this one as, as, as brief as I can. And I, I'm, I'm going to give you guys this honest truth that being a bartender, especially a bartender, especially if you're younger and you're smaller in statute, which means like you, do, you don't have a, I mean, you, you don't even have to really have a much of a physical presence in some bars to be a bouncer, but you kind of do at some other bars. Um, I was a bouncer and I was a uh, bartender. I did bar backing. I did a whole lot of things at the bars. But what I'm, you want to at least be a bartender or a bar back for two years of your life. And and where did I get this idea for two years? Well, I got this idea from Mormon missionaries. <laughs> it, it's true. I mean, there's a, I've done missionary work. I used to work for the church. I've actually been to, where have I been? I'll tell you real quick. This is why my videos always go over. But I've been to South America. I've been to southern states in the United States, Atlanta, uh, West Virginia, which isn't too southern. I've been to, uh, where else? Nigeria, Africa. I've been to Chiapas, Mexico. I've been to a whole bunch of different places uh, just for missionary work, not places that I've traveled for pleasure or anything like that. But, um, the Mormons, they, they totally understand the idea of like letting their kids grow up and like, and that's why I think they do like this whole two year missionary thing. I think what happens is after they graduate high school or something like that, they have to go off and they have to become missionaries and you'll, you'll know who the Mormons are because they're wearing these like white t-shirts or white collared shirts, excuse me, or button down shirts with these black ties and they come to you and they want to talk to you about the book of Mormon, this and that. And there's always these like young kids that have the same script, this and that. But what's my point is the Mormons are training their kids to prepare for the next stage of life. And what I'm telling to, to you today as a man, as a young man, even as a Christian man today is I think that being a bartender or being a bouncer for at least two years of your life is going to train you how to get ready for the next stages of your life. And here's why I'm going to give you a couple reasons why you're going to want to know how to the ultimately you're going to want to know how to interact with women. And we're going to have to living in a gynocentric social order, understand how to ha interact with women and know how to trigger women in the most positive ways that we possibly can. And being working at bars, you're going to know how to, t you're, you're going to be put in situations where you're going to be talked to them. You're going to have to actually talk with them. Right. And not only talk to them, but like observe what they do as a bouncer I, I, and a bartender. I couldn't tell you, I mean, how many times I just sat there and I watched women do what they do. And it's like, so fucking predictable now at this point it's just like it's like one the homogeneity of it all it's like they're all on the same script and 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 once you catch that script you're gonna understand it okay and this is why i'm saying you got to be a bouncer and a bartender because and i'm and we'll get to this all right so um why why be a bouncer or a bartender Preferably a bartender because they make more money. And then if you're at a good bar, and if you're going to work at a bar, do not work at a shithole bar. Work at a bar, and this is a caveat, and this is why my videos go over. Work at a bar that's close to colleges. Okay, trust me. Work at a bar that is close to colleges. Uh, particularly colleges that have a good investment in graduate programs. That's really where you're going to start to have a higher end bars okay and here in pittsburgh it's the university of pitt it's duquesne it's uh cmu um and believe me i i encountered women and messed with women from all of these universities and uh and this is why i'm telling you 
uh, when I was a, I had worked as a bouncer at one of the better bars here in Pittsburgh, in Shady Side, um, which is actually where I met my current wife. Uh, her and I met when she was in her twenties and messed around. And I've told you this in these previous videos, and uh, but and but also, you know, that's where you know you're gonna you're gonna be able to experience some of the the more quality you don't want to go work at a bar that's got a bunch of you know i don't know 50 year old women with 10 kids and you know cesarean section and stuff like that you don't want to do that you want to work at one where there's high quality options uh high value options where they're approaching you and it's going to take work i'm not going to lie like if for, in order for you to to be a bouncer or a bartender in one of these places, you're going to have to work out and to, you're going to have to like look presentable. You're going to have to do these things. And so that's why, you know, you can get into one of these bars. You don't have to be the best looking person ever, but you could have a good personality. But what I would say is try your best to try to get into one of these places. All right. So uh, let me get into some three point reasons why uh, the systems are set in place for you. Okay, and the re one of the point number one is this that the social proof is there, right? Um, you as I'll give you an example as a bouncer, you're gonna come across. Um, basically, you're gonna you're gonna be there, <coughs> and all of the people are gonna be approaching you, and all of the women are gonna be approaching you. And you're going to be the first thing, first person that everybody sees coming in. And you're a point of authority, but you're also a point of security, which is a very attractive quality for women. You're a point of security. Also, um, you're going to, you're going to be the guy that the other guys who know how to interact with women want to know because they're going to want to know you and they're going to want to go, yo, don't card us. Let's go in. Let's just let me and my girls come on in and it's going to build a sense of social proof while it's building a sense of social proof for the guy who brings the girls in. It's building a sense of social proof for you too, because you know who these guys are. Okay. And that's an example. And, and also if you're a bouncer and you have to like rough somebody up and I recommend you, you know, taking some sort of, uh, you know, self-defense classes so on and so forth before you do this um which i did i took some boxing classes a while back but you know i i i think when i was a bouncer i was in uh maybe two fights like two really bad things and i knew what the, i knew how to handle myself and it was fine but you're you're if you ever get to a point where you actually have to deal with somebody the women see that and it's like holy smokes like they <laughs> I mean, I remember a particular story where I, I actually had to deal with this guy and I had to actually kind of throw him down the stairs. It was weird. I had to throw him downstairs to get him out. And a group of girls saw this and they were like, next thing you know, they're coming up to me and talking to me and they're like, blah, 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 huh? right? This and that. Women love that shit, right? So the social proof is there. You're a, you as a, a bouncer. Or as a bartender, let me talk about it as a bartender real quick. As a bartender, everyone's coming up to you. Everyone wants to know you. There's nothing, you know, <laughs> there's not a whole lot of uh, work that you have to do as a bartender except serve drinks, talk. You're not drunk, okay? And you're just kind of going with the flow. And you'll have... You know, you'll have all types of opportunities to talk to women left and right. The women who are not successful that night at landing a guy, right? They'll come and talk to you. You'll get to see how the the highly successful guys who are good at getting women land those women. You know, you'll get to observe that. You'll get to see. I mean, usually the guys who are good at landing the women are pretty much done by midnight at least women that usually hang around the bar in Pennsylvania bars close by two, uh, one 45, we, sh we opened up the lights, but anybody hanging out after 1230 usually was kind of like uh, lower end quality kind of status. Right. But, um, so anyway, point number two is this as a bartender 
or a bouncer, you don't have to deal with approach anxiety. And this is a major problem for you guys. So you want to put yourself in a, in a, in a position to do something that's uncomfortable. Working on a bar is uncomfortable because people are approaching you. But they're, you know, when you're going out to a bar, if you, worked at a, if you work at a bar, put it this way, if you work at a, work at a bar, you, you work there. You're there three, four nights a week. You don't go out to bars three, four nights a week, right? Unless you're a person like myself back in the day when I was in college, I would go out sometimes seven nights a week because I, I just was very social. I loved it. But, you know, like if you're somebody who struggles with some social anxiety, working at a bar is going to help you work through that tremendously. And nobody, much like, uh, like people with anxiety don't realize that people who people with anxiety don't realize that other people don't realize you have anxiety. Okay. So just realize that if, if you are working at a bar, your the approach anxiety is going to be, is going to disappear because people are going to be approaching you all the time, all the time. I, I remember being, uh, uh, when I was a bouncer, I would have women literally wait for me, uh, they would approach me all the time. My wife was actually one of those women who did. Uh, she was fairly aggressive towards me. Actually, my wife's first words to me was, as I was carding her, was, oh, my God, you're so cute. Do you have a girlfriend? And uh, I don't recommend you actually ever marry a woman unless those are her first words to you. Uh, if Without genuine desire, move on. Don't ever even take a woman seriously unless there's actual gen genuine desire there. How are we looking? 12 minutes. All right. So... The approach anxiety is gone when you're when you're a, a bartender or even a bouncer, right? It's like they're approaching you, so you, the approaches are happening, and you're it's happening not not at your expense. You don't have to exhaust any energy doing it. It's happening for you. And any PUA or pickup artist would tell you that if you could eliminate that aspect of it and just cut to the chase. I don't know if they would tell you that. I've actually never had a conversation with any of these guys. I've only heard about them. But if you can eliminate that anxiety, like, that's like a cheat code, I would imagine, right? So, and uh, point number three here. Uh, you are not the guy at the bar trying to get laid. You're not the guy at the bar. You're not the PUA guy. And if you're a good PUA guy, nobody's going to know that. I guess the women won't be able to figure that out. But... Maybe, maybe not, but you're not the guy at the bar trying to get laid, AKA you're not the guy. You're not just another customer. You are the guy who is on the other side of the bar, who is in the industry and you are separated from her. And this was something I learned in church ministry. Um, oh, well, yeah. I did learn this in church ministry. There's this, uh, you know, we, we, we learned this in seminary where there was a distinction between the pastor and the congregants, right? Right. You're set apart. Well, that happens in all types of human institutions. When you're at the bar, I mean, any, anywhere, right? There's hierarchies. What I'm saying, it's a hierarchy. When you're at the bar and you work at the bar, you are part of the hierarchy. You are, if you're a bartender, you are a level of celebrity. You are. Same thing if you're the bouncer. You're a level of celebrity. It's a low level of celebrity. I'm not saying you're fucking Tom Cruise. Who the fuck wants to be him? Why did I name him? I don't know. I don't watch TV anymore. I'm not saying you want to be Rolo Tomasi. These are the only guys I watch anymore. So <laughs> YouTube shit. Uh, I'm not saying you want to be any of these guys, right? I'm not saying that that's who you're going to be, but you are, you're separated. It's almost as, as if you working at a bar and everyone else at the bar, there's a type of ordination. And I'm going to use that example because I, I, I was uh, almost ordained as a Presbyterian minister. There's a type of ordination where you are separated from your congregants, those parishioners, those people who are out the, on the other side of the bar. You're not them, okay? And I think women pick up on this, okay? You're not, 
and I think anybody in an industry, anybody that ever works in an industry kind of understands this. I mean, any industry, the bar industry, the porn industry, the any industry, like there's the inside group, there's the outside group. The, the industry people serve the people that are on the outside. And the people on the outside don't quite understand the people that are on the inside. But the people on the inside, they're all in on it, right? It's like everyone in the bars that work at the bars, they're all in on it. And we get it. We're here to make money off you. And then everyone on the outside, they're kind of just like aloof out doing their own thing, like working their normal nine to five jobs, which I'm very excited to be now be doing myself personally. Um, I don't work a nine to five. I actually am training to work from home. I, I can't fucking wait. I love it. Um, but I, I, anyway, I, I think you guys are kind of hopefully following what I'm saying here. Um, it's you're not you're not the other guy at the bar just getting drunk and just c trying to pick up chicks you're not just uh, a person that um you're 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 on the inside you're on the no you know everyone who comes in and the other thing too is you'll if you work at these bars you will see waves i'm telling you waves of women come in like by the month it's like almost every three four months a different wave of 23 24 year old girls will come in come in come out come in come out it's the strangest thing and you'll notice behaviors pay attention pay attention pay attention to what they're doing and what they're saying and how they're interacting and have fun with it man and uh i yeah, have a lot of fun with it. Honestly, you'll have a great opportunity to learn a lot of things. I'm not saying you have to sleep with every single one of these girls, but you will certainly have those opportunities. And uh, you will begin to develop a an a plethora of mindset, right? An abundancy mindset. Um, as uh, Tomasi would say, an abundancy, abundancy mindset because these girls come in waves. They come in, they go. They come in, they go. And you'll start to experience that and you'll start to realize that. And it's like, you'll start to see the pattern. It's like, if you work at a bar for two years, you'll probably see four waves of different women coming in and they'll come and they'll go, they'll come and they'll go. Um, and you'll be in that position to benefit from it. Um, if you play your cards right. Right. And you spin those plates like uh, Rolo would say, um, let me see here. Uh, oh, also, work out if you're working at the bar work out and go to a dojo okay be ready to be self-defense to take care of yourself um i do some boxing on the side I, I did boxing back then too and i recently i i do um crossfit and fuck you if you make fun of crossfit i'll anybody wants to watch this video and wants to challenge me to a high intensity workout for time all right, cool. I'll do it with you. Anyone my age, anyone 40 and above. Anyway, so, um, yeah, like I said, and, and some of my last notes here is if women sees you dealing with a fight, uh, and I've seen this, I've actually had this happen to me personally as a bouncer. I've had, uh, there was two nights in particular where I had to deal with a fight, and uh, afterwards, uh I had both nights two separate individual women come up to me on each di on 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 the e uh, each different night, and you know next thing led to the next, and it was because they saw me deal with that, and uh, it turned them on tremendously. So you'll learn a lot about human nature in that sense. You'll learn about human uh, female hypergamy. I recommend also as a bartender what I didn't have, and too bad I mentioned this 19 minutes and. 13 seconds in you should be reading Rola Tomasi's the rational male series because that coming in with a red pill and being a bouncer or a bartender. Oh my gosh, that I would have had so much fun with that. I, I, I honestly, I think I, 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 I would at 40 years old now would do that again, just because I could just because I could honestly, uh, don't drink as much as everyone else. Um, you'll realize that people in the industry drink a shit ton. Don't drink as much as them. Okay. And the other thing is 
save your money. People in the industry save, uh, they blow their money. They make three, four, five, six hundred dollars a night, and then they go and spend it. You know, they'll go out to bars and they'll spend it. Don't do that. Save your money. Save your money. Put it in an investment. Okay. If you make six, if you make, let's say three hundred dollars a night, you need to invest a hundred dollars, a hundred dollars of that. And uh, three hundred is a lot here for Pittsburgh. I don't know what that's like anywhere else. I would imagine places like Vegas and other cities. You're probably as a bartender making a lot of money. Um, I would say at least uh, put away twenty percent of that, if not maybe even half of it. I mean, what the fuck do you need? You're twenty three years old. What do you need that money for, right? doesn't cost you a lot of money to get laid if you know what you're doing just you know anyway so that's uh that's it that's my advice 20 minutes 44 seconds in um much longer than i always i always go over because i can't help myself i'm a talker but all right that's it uh be a bartender or a bouncer at least once in your life for two years trust me you will love it peace